It's the main round of the European Handball Championships from Serbia. And the host nation are involved in a real classic. Denmark have the edge in the last two seconds. Poland share the spoils with Sweden. France, well, they're in trouble. And we have the top three goals of the day. In Group 1 is Serbia in red against Germany and Germany's Sven Soren Christophson celebrated the score that tied things up at 21s. Serbia's Rashko Stojkovic scored from the edge of the area with the assist from Nikola Manilovic. Great crowd at the Belgrade Arena. But Lars Kaufmann got Germany on the scoreboard with a shot from distance. Germany's Holger Glandorf scored with another powerful shot. This made it 5-3 to Serbia. And then Serbia's Momi Ilic's shot was deflected by Silvio Henseveta, the German keeper, but the rebound went to Radko Prodanovic, who scored a beautiful goal from the right. And then Darko Stanic, the Serbian goalkeeper, made a good save, but the ball went to Patrick Gretzky on the left, and he found Juvish Genschweimer for the score. In the dying seconds of the first half, Serbia's Momir Ilic scored with a long, powerful shot, and this made it 12-7 to Serbia. And the home team fans had good reason to celebrate. Ivan Stankovic increased the lead to 15-8. It was all looking so good for the Serbs. But Patrick Gretzky scored as part of a surge by Germany, and this made it 16-15. Uwe Gunsheimer kept the Germans within that solitary goal. And great German team play saw Christoph Surkow tie things up at 18 apiece. Adrian Sfar scored. Mind you, there was a suspicion of a foot violation about it. Sven Sorens Christopher scored, and Germany were just one goal adrift. And with the clock on eight seconds, Christophson again. 21 21, and somehow Germany had forced a tie. And boy, did the Germans celebrate! 21 21. As Denmark in red against Macedonia and the Danish man of the match, Mikkel Hammer Hansen, was mobbed by his teammates. Kirill Lazarov was Macedonia's most valuable player. And 39-year-old Stef Alyoshki scored from the left wing with a beautiful lob to give Macedonia a 5-3 lead. Beautiful lob. And Kirill Lazarov scored from 10 metres to make the score 8-7 to Macedonia. And again, it was Lazarov from the same distance. And by now, it was 15-10 to Macedonia. Many Macedonians in the crowd. And Lazarov, well, he's a great passer too, finding Stoyan Stoilov for one of his seven goals. And this made it 16-10 to Macedonia. And another terrific pass, this time by Numch Mojovski, and Lazarov completes the alley-oop. 19-13 to Macedonia. 
Well, Denmark closed the gap with a powerful shot and score by Mikkel Hansen. 19-15 now, getting closer. And the Lazarov versus Hansen duel continued in the second half with Lazarov again from nine metres. Now just four goals, 22-18 to Macedonia. And Denmark made it just a one-goal game when Bo Spellerberg fed Hans Lindberg, who came from the right to the centre, to score from close range. And another great pass by Spellerberg, this time to Rene Toft Hansen in the centre, who scores blind, shooting behind his back, 23-23. And Denmark went ahead with a superb shot by Mikael Hansen. One of his 12 goals. Well, Macedonia thought they had the perfect response. Kirill Lazarov went one better with 13 goals. This one from nine metres, and he made the score 32-31. Under two minutes to play, and it was, of course, Lazarov from nine metres. 32, place 32. Nine seconds on the clock. Denmark's keeper, Niklas Landin Jakobsen, saves his left foot. Rene Toft Hansen dives on the floor to get the ball back. He passes to Hansen, and his long pass finds Lindbergh, who scores two seconds from the buzzer. 33, 32 to Denmark, and Denmark go ballistic. Well, here's that last play again. Kiro Lazarov shot is saved. Hans Lindbergh breaks the hearts of the Macedonian fans. A one-goal win for Denmark. Wow, what a game. Here's Poland against Sweden, and the Polish players were absolutely ecstatic and by contrast Sweden just could not believe that they tied this game amazingly Sweden seemed to be unstoppable in the first half with Henrik Lundström scoring to make the score 3-0 and then a smart lob from Lundström made it 9-5 to Sweden great deception there Lundström seemed to be running the show for the Swedes, scoring six goals in that first half. This one from the left, making the score 12-5. Poland were finding the Swedish defence very, very tough, but Bart Jaska scored in the top left corner to keep his team just about in touch, trailing 6-13. A good save by Sweden's keeper Andreas Palicka, followed by a superb long pass to Nick Egberg, and a delightful tough touch shot increased the margin to 10. And it grew to 11 at half time. Was it all over? Well, maybe th Sweden thought so, but certainly not Poland. When jo Bart Jaska scored from close range, that heralded a 6-1 surge of scoring that brought Poland right back into the game. And somehow Hendrik Lundström failed to score in the second half, thanks very much to saves like that one from Marcin Wuchery. Poland punished just about every mistake that Sweden made. Mikhail Jureki unleashing a 111 km per hour shot to pull Poland to within four. Sweden regrouped with about eight and a half minutes to play, and Andreas Nilsson made the score 28-23. But another bad turnover by Sweden, an awful pass, and Poland pounced. Adam Wisniewski pulled his team to within three. Just over four minutes on the clock, and Sweden looked to Nick Egberg again. And it was still only three goals between the teams. Under two minutes, another lost ball by Sweden, and Adam Wojcicki scored on the counter-attack. 29-28, and remember, Sweden led by 11 at half-time. And then Poland found that man, Wojcicki, again, and he tied the scores at 29 each with 35 seconds remaining. Sweden seemed to be shell-shocked. The referee called a violation against them. And there were five seconds left now. Well, Poland didn't care. They had made the most astounding recovery, 29 each. Poland celebrated, but what effect will this have on Sweden? Well, only time will tell. It was all tied up. 
Holland, Sweden, 29 each. Denmark by one over Macedonia and Serbia. Well, how did they tie that one as well? Great recovery from Germany. So two ties there in this group one. And Denmark, the only winners there, 33-32 against Macedonia. Well, it seems the holders, France, need a miracle to reach the semis. They are the European World and Olympic champions. And they lost by three to Spain. And they also lost by three to Hungary. French coach Claude Ernesto was extremely upset. Their only win in the preliminary round was against Russia with a score 28-24. Yes, coach Claude Ernesto. Let's say he's upset. Well, we had a chat with some of the French. And uh, in particular, we spoke to Didier Dinard. Well, I personally don't understand what's happened. Even if one day things don't go your way, it's difficult to know exactly what the problem is. The most important thing is not to blame other players. It's time for self-criticism. Nikola Karabic, he plays in the number 13 shirt. And Jerome Fernandez, he plays number two. And here's Fernandez. We don't have the right to stop fighting. We have to play hard against the teams that we're going to face in the next days. So no matter what the team, we will fight until the end of this competition. Well, Hungary beat France and tied their games against Spain and Russia. And the Hungarian fans were jubilant. The French fans and the players, on the other hand, absolutely dumbfounded. And here's Didier Dinar again. And France have always played as a team. That's our strongest point, and that's why we always think that things are going to improve. Even if we're losing by two goals, we always think we'll be able to come back. And we thought that this would be the case this time. But the reality is that we haven't fought as much as we needed to in order to win these games. Well, amazingly, France surrendered a five-goal half-time lead against Russia. How did that come about? Well, again, we asked Jer Jerome Fernandez, and here he is telling us exactly what happened. Well, I know my teammates are capable of reacting positively, so we'll keep fighting because we want to see, want to be seen to be good, even if we lose. Yes, we have no points. Says Thierry Omeya, so I don't know even if we still have a chance to go through. We have no points. It's going to be difficult. So the big question is, even though the French are a terrific team, are they good enough to recover from such poor performances in the preliminary round? Well, their next match is against Slovenia on Sunday. There are the games coming up in Group 2, Hungary against Iceland. A big game for France against Slovenia. And Spain, they play Croatia. France, the defending champions at the bottom of this Group 2. Well, with the top three goals of the day at number three. Poland against Sweden, Adam Wazuski one more time. He found nicely in the center position and he scores from close to tie the game at 29-29. Serbia against Germany, last eight seconds of the game. Sven Soren Christofsson scores a powerful shot to tie the game at 21 each. And Denmark against Macedonia, nine seconds left on the clock. Kirill Lazarov loses the ball and Hans Lim.